All right, for this next story, I'm going to be saying a lot of words in Nahuatl. In this story, um, you'll find two characters, and they're very interesting characters, and you might see some similarities between this story and other stories that you've heard. Maybe that's something to think about when you hear this, right? So this story is called The Princess and the Warrior by Duncan Donatiu. Once upon a time, there lived a kind and beautiful princess named Itza. Even though she was the daughter of an emperor, she loved to spend time with the people who grew corn in the milpas. She lived to teach them poetry, or flor y canto. Suitors traveled from distant lands to woo her. They presented her with rare and lavish gifts, such as quetzal feathers and turquoise necklaces. They would all say the same thing, you are the most beautiful maiden in the land. Marry me, princess, and you will live in my luxurious palace. You won't have to spend time in the fields ever again. No, thank you. Itza would reply. She was not interested in any of the suitors or their gifts. One day, a warrior named Popopka came to see her. Princess, I know you have a kind and beautiful heart, for I have seen you teaching Floricanto to the villagers in the Milpas. I don't have any expensive gifts to offer, but if you marry me, I promise that I will love you for who you are. I will stay by your side no matter what, as long as Donatiu rises, as long as Sentontle bird sings. Popopka's words were music to Itza's ears. She could hear the honesty in his voice, and she fell in love with him. The emperor did not want his daughter to marry a mere soldier. He wanted her to marry wealthy and powerful Totlawani, a ruler. But he knew that Popoca was the best and bravest warrior in his kingdom. The emperor and his people had been at war with Jaguar Claw, the Totlawani of the neighboring land, for years, and there seemed to be no end in sight. He called Popoca to him. Popoca, the emperor said, if you defeat Jaguar Claw once and for all, I will let you marry my daughter Itza. Popoca and Itza were overjoyed. Popoca gathered his most courageous men and marched to war. Popoca fought numerous battles. He and his men were injured and almost defeated many times. But when the end seemed near, Popoca would always think of Itza, waiting for his return. He would defend himself with his chamali, pack with his makwawitl, and inspire his men to fight even more courageous than before. Slowly the tide turned, and Popoca and his men began winning battles. It was clear that they would soon defeat Jaguar Claw. Realizing this, Jaguar Claw devised a plan to steal from Popoca what the warrior cherished most. He bribed one of Popoca's personal messengers, tell Itza that Popoca had been killed, and offer her this potion, Okli, to soothe her grief. Everything is lost, princess, the messenger said sadly when he arrived at the palace. Popoca and his men fought bravely, but they were defeated and killed. No, that can't be, cried Itza. She locked herself in her chamber and wept and refused to eat or speak with anyone. That night, the messenger came to her. I know your heart is shattered as if you were made of obsidian glass, he said. But take this drink, princess. It will help you ease your grief. Itza took the potion and drank it all. Lying down on her petate, she fell into a deep sleep. The next day, before night fell and the first seed lali appeared in the sky, Popopka defeated Jaguar Claw. Unaware of the lies the messenger had told, the great warrior and his troops marched back to the palace in triumph, ready to share the good news with the princess and the emperor. But when they arrived, they were met with disbelief. Popopka, said the emperor, one of your messengers told us that you were dead. Isa was heartbroken. She took a special okli to ease her pain. And now we cannot wake her. This can't be true, said Popoka. Itza, my beautiful princess, has to awaken. He ran to her chamber. He kissed her and held her in his arms. He called out to her over and over. But Itza did not wake up. Cool air will surely revive her, Popoka told the emperor. He carried Itza through the throngs of villagers who wept as they passed, past the milpa, and all through the night to the top of the tepet. He laid her on a Xochitl bed. He knelt down beside her. The cool mountain air soon turned to snow, but still the princess did not wake up. Popoka refused to move. He stayed next to Itza, just as he had promised when he first met her. 
As long as Tonat Dew rises, as long as Sensochle bird sings. In time, where once there was a princess with her true love by her side, two volcanoes emerged. One is known as Istasewatl, or Sleeping Woman. The other one is known as Popocatepe, or Smoky Mountain. Istasewa continues to sleep, but Popocatepe spews ashes and smoke from time to time, as if attempting to awake his sleeping princess.